When you talk about an effeminate church, we completely get that. But but speak to that a bit more. Help us understand what you mean by that and what we need to change if we're going to have any to, uh, an to have an church? effeminate church. You know, I mean, I can tell you what I think the the solution is to the effeminate yeah. church: uh, waiting around until these guys die. I know mean, that sounds horrible, but and I've heard people complain about well, the College of Cardinals is stacked in this direction, and there's no way we're going to get we're going to have sort of these modernist, you know, kind of baby boomer, immediate post Vatican II. I'm not some anti Vatican II guy, but these these popes forever. No, we're not. Like I just I went for a walk this morning in Pittsburgh, hmm. and I ended up popping into mass and, and speaking. I don't even know what his name was, Father whoever. He's probably 30 years old. On fire, talked to me for way longer than I wanted to talk. Masculine just, dude, um, yeah, from masculine Africa. from the depths of Africa. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, you give me a, give me a pope from the anywhere. Just walk through a rainforest <laughs> at the equator in Africa. Find a Catholic the first man. First guy you see, make him pope. I'm down. And it's hilarious, right? You look at like the Amazonian synod, or whatever synods are going on. I know I'm all over the place, but mm. and. The Germans are all there, like we should ordain women deacons and mm-hmm. um, divorced people should get married. Or should might be okay the now. Meanwhile, there's like the dude from Uganda sitting in the back who's uh, Boko Haram uh, killed uh, 14 nuns at a convent. Uh, can we talk about actual problems? Yeah. Like it's beautiful. Like they get it. Mm-hmm. They they understand because they haven't lived in our Western decadent nothingness where we mm-hmm. don't feel like we have real problems, so we invent these stupid made up problems. But you do see a return to a desire for traditional um, gender roles, sex roles, right? You, you, you see a desire for that and a leaning into that. E- even in secular ways, like the, the art of manliness, I don't know sure. if that's a Christian guy who runs that or what, but there, there is this desire. You see that in the traditional movement, right? Where it's like men want to treat themselves with respect and so they dress in a suit uh, or, or whatever. And um, again, the point isn't to demonize people who don't wear suits to mass. The point is just to say like there's this longing for something but, yeah, but sometimes that comes off as artificial. But what do you think? I think kids in particular are gonna gear towards what they see as the the strong horse, right? Yeah. Over and over and over again. And if mom and dad aren't presenting, here is here is who we are. If you're not gifting your child an identity, we're made to have identities. We're made to live in communities with similar people, with mm-hmm. like-minded people, right? Which is another thing I love about Bosco. It's another thing I love about a Regina Chaley or any of these small Catholic communities. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't show that strength, especially as dads, I blame everything on dads, yeah. just about, right? But if, they, if, if you don't have somebody in your life showing you that strength and sort of grabbing you and saying, come on, this is you, this is us, here's what we're doing. It can be anything, right, to fill that void, because we all want that void filled. Yeah. But if you don't have somebody doing that and pointing you in the correct direction, then you're gonna find, you're gonna find something else to fill it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can talk about anything from the transgender stuff to gangs to a hundred different People are uh, PETA, right? Whatever it is. Yeah. You're going to fill that with some radical strength from somewhere because mm-hmm. we have to have that. Yeah, we want to be dogmatic about something. Something. We have It'll to. It'll either be truth or something else. That's why the left, it's a, it's a religion, right, in yeah. a lot of ways. It really feels like mm-hmm. that. I often say that the uh, the mask is to wokeism what the scapula is to Catholicism. 100%. It just seems 100%. like a token of group identity. Because we want that. We think we're beyond that. We, we, we pretend we lie to ourselves and say, no, that's old, like, tribalistic, you know, living in the woods, painting mm-hmm. ourselves, whatever. Like, no, that's you. That's, they they yeah. were just as human as you are. They, they are, were the exact same. They had the same souls and the same concupiscence and the same brokenness and the same desire for belonging that you have back then. And we can't pretend like we're past it. So when you talk to your teens about masculinity and femininity, like, what does that look like and how do they respond to it? So I'm actually doing something for homework for my Theology of the Body class this week that I'm really excited about, Um, sort of in that same same vein. Um, I had them all write for homework 10 non-physical attributes that they find attractive in members of the opposite sex and 10 non-physical attributes that they find unattractive, right? So attractive and unattractive. And then I read them all out loud, right? I don't say, you know, (laughs) Penny Sabala says that she really (laughs) likes guys who are this, right? I don't do that. Um, But... What we do is we, I, I read these out loud and they're all beautiful. They really are. I mean, some kids will just write 10 quick bullet points. Yeah. I had a kid last year who wrote like a tome, like one of these guys <laughs> of just like a paragraphs on each. Wow. And the guys will always say, here's what I want, right? I want someone who's, who's loving and nurturing. They'll say like good sense of humor and stuff. Someone who's good with kids. Who's what they'll say all these traditionally feminine, authentic, beautiful things about you know, what they, what they really find attractive. 
And then the girls will say, I want someone who is strong. I want someone who respects me. I want someone who doesn't use bad language, you know, when he's out with me or make dirty jokes in front of me. I want somebody who respects themselves, somebody who's not addicted to pornography. And the point of that is so I can look these guys and look these girls in the eye and say, see, they want you to be like you want to be. Because I still believe that. I do believe that we all want to be that. Right? We sacrifice our dignity. We sacrifice our masculinity, our authentic masculinity, for the sake of being this cartoonish whatever that we feel like we have to be, mm. or else we're going to be left alone. We're not going to be, we're going to be lonely. Mm. And so we're willing to sacrifice our dignity and our self-worth to do that. I was talking to girls in class Friday, I think, and we were talking about girls who post pictures right online or send nudes or send you know lots of bikini pictures or lingerie pictures that they send around and all of them all of them were saying we don't nobody wants to do that the girls yeah. they're doing that because they're just they're desperate for attention yeah love me yeah. please love me that's what we're all doing i'm just as broken as they are yeah. i always i keep coming back to that because it's really important to say out loud yeah i can i can point to anybody who's listening to this right now right and you and neil and whoever and i can tell you all the things about you because I'm doing the same thing, right? You worry that you're not good enough and that you're not lovable and that mm -hmm. you're not interesting enough, right? And you were, we're all just little balls of self-conscious whatever because we're fallen and we're broken. Mm. And you have to acknowledge it. You have to reach down and engage out loud with those things. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.